Hello, Miata Internet. It's Keith Tanner here from Flying Miata, and today I'm going to be talking about a spherical replacement for your suspension bushings. Why you might want this, what does it do, is it suitable for a street car, how hard is the installation, all those sort of questions. So, stay tuned for that. First, short commercial break. Did you not get a, commer a uh, calendar? Yes, calendar. For Christmas, now's your chance. We still have some of these left. We're selling them for a whole penny. Um, and they ship for free if it's part of another, a larger order. If you buy just the catalog on its own, it'll cost you, I think, $9 to ship, $10 to ship. So buy more stuff. But anyway, we have these on our web store right now. Obviously, limited time offer. We only have a certain number of these, and they are good until the end of 2024. But the beautiful Miata pictures will stick around for as long as you keep it on your wall. So there we go. So before I get started, the usual sort of thing. If you like this kind of content, we put out videos at least once a week, technical stuff, product stuff, sometimes both. Um, if you like this sort of content, please make sure to like our channels, to subscribe to our channels for notifications, to make sure you find out when new videos are coming. Like I said, there's at least one a week. We do one live on Thursdays, and we, um, and we release them out there to the world so you can see them later. If you do have any questions over the course of this video, please do put them in the comments. Um, if you put them in while we're shooting live, I'll do my best to answer them live. If you put them in after we've shot live, we won't be able to do that, but we will answer them in the comments as well. We do read them, we do pay attention. So we love to hear your questions because it helps us learn more things. All right, spherical bearings for your suspension. Check this thing out, how, how pretty is that? Gorgeous little piece. I'm gonna start with some little background here. We've talked about bushings on this channel before, but basically there's 22 bushings in your suspension. From the factory, the rubber. Here's one out of, out of the car. Uh, and they are used basically every place, almost every place that a control arm moves up and down. Now the, the factory rubber bushings, um, they're made as sort of one piece. The, the, center, the center steel tube is bonded to the rubber itself. And so it moves by having the rubber deflect. So the rubber has to be soft enough to allow for that twist, for that deflection. Um, but that also means that it can deflect sideways or back and forth. Basically, your whole suspension is attached by rubber. That's good because it cuts down on some noise and vibration. It allows for misalignment for well, when you're doing alignment, um, you do have to sort of twist the arms or twist the control arms in the subframe. So you need to have a little bit of capacity for that misaligning without, without binding. But generally speaking, there's just some rubber in there. Everything's just a little bit shaky. One other interesting thing about rubber bushings is that they have a spring rate uh, because they are effectively this section here, the middle section, is bolted to the subframe. This section here is almost completely bonded. It's not mechanically bonded. There's no, there's no um, adhesive in there or anything, but they're in there so tight that it's bonded to the control arm. There's no relative movement. All the movement comes from this thing going up and down. And that means being rubber, it wants to return to its happy place. So you can have preload in bushings. That's why when you do lower a car or change the ride height of a, of a Miata, especially an NC or an NB, ND, you have to make sure you reset all the bushings to make sure they're not trying to do something. I'll show you that in a minute. So that's what we're dealing with from the factory. And the biggest complaint about these, especially on a car that's being used for a lot of performance, um, use track use or very, very precise, you know, canyon carving, or you just want the most precision possible, is the fact that they are designed to deflect. They, 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 they mush, you know, you don't want the mush. So a common replacement for that is polyurethane. Now polyurethane is a little bit differently a little bit different in that it doesn't, the, the actual polyurethane itself doesn't, doesn't deform, it doesn't spring. What happens instead, it acts more like a bearing where this crush sleeve in the middle actually rotates inside the bushing. And there's one of the complaints people have about them. This one's bone dry, obviously, but, uh, but they can make noise, especially some of the cheaper ones. They need a certain amount of maintenance, you need to keep lubrication in there. Um, and while that, that Movement, the way that they, the way they rotate inside means they don't have a spring rate. It makes the suspension feel more supple because you don't have the spring, the suspension trying to go back where it was. It's not changing its spring rate as it moves through. It makes the suspension feel more supple, but you've got that maintenance overhead. And the fact that this is stiffer gets rid of some of that smush, but it also means more chance for binding as you adjust for alignment. Because again, these things have to allow for a little bit of misalignment as you align the car. So. It's a step in the right direction, but it's not perfect. There's also versions of these using Delrin, which is basically, think of it as a harder version of polyurethane. Effectively, it's the same. It's got some self-lubricating properties, so it doesn't have the squeaking problems, 
but it's really hard, and so it does not like to deflect at all. Um, so you get into real binding problems if you have an alignment. You know, if you're trying to get more, cam more camber in the car, a lot of caster, you can end up with these things being torqued a little bit, and that causes real problems. So there are some, I think there are some uh, polyurethane bushings, polybush in the UK. I think they're actually bonded. They're built like a rubber bushing out of polyurethane. But since they are difficult to find in the US, we will not talk about those. So that brings to mind, or brings us to these spherical bearing inserts. The nice thing about these is that they're a little tight, which is fine, but they allow for all sorts of misalignment easily without any binding. Um, they don't have any spring rate. They can rotate nice and easily inside, so you don't have to worry about the spring rate of the suspension bouncing up and down. There's absolutely no slop in this. This is basically metal on metal, probably a little bit of Teflon in there. So ideally, it's sort of the ideal of all worlds. It's got some downsides. Um, they cost money. There's always that. Uh, they, uh, they take a little bit more to install, and we'll talk about that in a moment too. But fundamentally, um, they're actually a very good option. And there are some cars have come from the factory with this. I think some of the really high-end BMW, the, the horny competition models may have done it. Um, I, possibly some 911 GT3 RS might have. I know that some TVRs did for a while there. They used them from the factory. So if you're looking for maximum precision, this is the way to go. So I'm going to show you. There we go. I'm going to show you on the car what I mean about that spring rate. So let's go over this way, Travis. So this is a factory upper control arm. We're in the middle of doing an install on this car. And this is a factory upper control arm with a rubber bushing. And you can see if I push this down, it goes right back to where it was. That's the spring rate I was talking about. And that's not necessarily desirable. It fights the suspension moving a little bit. It also affects the spring rate you choose for the car. So if you get rid of that, you may have to adjust your spring rates depending how sensitive you are, how stiff they are. But there is a legitimate spring rate in there. And on the NDs and NCs, it's actually even higher. So on this side, This one is mounted with the spherical bearings, or the spherical bushing, if you want to call them that. And you can see it stays wherever you put it. It's not floppy, because you want these, these bearings to be fairly tight. Otherwise, you will get movement. You will get noise and rattling. Um, so they've got fairly tight tolerances. But you can see that there's no spring rate on this at all. It'll have no effect on the movement of the suspension. And now I'm covered in goo. Um, the advantage to that, the effect you feel on the road, is that the suspension moves more freely. It almost feels more plush. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to subscribe or to, to, to describe, but basically the suspension just feels like it's more, it moves more easily through its range. And it, it's actually a very, very nice feeling. I like it. You get it with the polyurethane bushings if they're well lubricated, and you get it with these as well. But it's just, it feels more, more high end, honestly. Um, what you do get with it, and it's not, this is a difficult thing to quantify because different people have different levels of tolerance for this, you can get a little more high frequency vibration through the car, a little more noise through there. Um, some people never notice it. Some people, it might bother them a little bit. When we did our first road testing on this, we only did testing with just the front lower control arms because they're the ones that take the biggest cornering loads and braking loads. Um, and we did not notice any significant difference or any real notable difference in noise vibration harshness. We did notice the improvement in, in sharpness, basically in accuracy of the front end. You know, when you turn in, and you load up that outside wheel with cornering force, you didn't have to let the bushings go smoosh into their happy place. It was just right there. All the, it took some of the squish out. We definitely noticed that, but we really didn't notice much in terms of extra NVH. The reason we're doing an install on this car today is because this is one of our development cars. We're going to run it on a full set of spherical bearings. And um, the rear, we might feel a little bit no more NVH back there because I noticed that you tend to get more ride quality feedback from the back. But based on our previous experience, especially with the polys, with the, uh, with the, the front end, I don't think it will be a terrible thing. So we'll have more information on that as we go. So why would you want to use these things? Basically, is if you want maximum precision, maximum accuracy out of your suspension. It's not necessarily something, one of the questions we had was, you know, how do they deal well with salt? If you're winter driving your Miata, this is probably not the sort of Miata you're going to put them on. Um, this is not necessarily the perfect daily driver thing because honestly, the race car on the street, if you've ever tried it, it's tiring. Having a little bit of extra squish in the suspension, having a, a car that's not completely hyperactive that you're daily driving in the snow, 
it's a bit much at times. So we would recommend this for performance builds, you know, track cars, um, HPDE cars, uh, daily drivers. If you're running a race seat on the street and on the street and you think that's cool, then maybe this is your sort of thing. Um, I will, I will mention that these are not just generic spherical bearings. Uh, these are custom made. And if, if you want to zoom in here, Travis, you can see they are sealed. Uh, so they're chromally, they're, um, you know, they're plated chromally, they've got sealed bearings. You can see the really, really good rubber seals on these things to keep dirt and debris and water out of the bearing themselves. One of the questions we get a lot of is expected longevity on these. They do have a light, limited lifetime warranty, but they have seen more than 50,000 miles of track and street testing um, and they're holding up just fine. So I think they've got a very good lifespan. Exactly what that will be, it's hard to say. I think the factory bushings have a lifespan of maybe 100,000 miles if you're lucky. And I know a lot of people run them longer than that. So <laughs> yeah, what is the lifespan? We'll have to see. Um, these will probably start showing, you'll start hearing them rattle effectively when they do start wearing out. So that's, that will be the question when, when it gets there, but uh, it'll be a little more obvious than a shagged set of rubber bushings. So you can see these ones were, but um, yeah, I, I'm personally putting these on a set of one of my cars uh, because I'm not concerned about the, the lifetime warranty or the lifetime, the longevity especially given the fact that this is a very high performance car that's going on. So if you're, if you're looking for maximum performance, maximum precision, I think it's a good way to go. One nice thing about them, especially here's a set on a, on a control arm, by the way, I did, uh, I did have this one here so you can check it out. The installation process is relatively straightforward. First you press out the old bushings. That's going to be the fact with any of them. Uh, and then you have to drill two holes in the bottom of your control arm and thread them and then install these set screws. We also recommend divoting, putting a small divot in the actual body of the bearing um, as you do that and that will keep these in place. So the installation takes a little bit longer, um, but it's not, it's not too bad. I mean, pressing in a set of new rubber bushings is more effort than installing these, I can tell you that. Um, polys are a little easier to install, but uh, generally speaking, it's a pretty easy installation. One nice thing about these, if you're a racer, if you're spending a lot of time on track, you're going to bend control arms. And unlike other kinds of bushings, the nice thing about these, these are reusable. All you have to do is take out these grub screws, take this bearing out, and you can put it in your new control arms. If you try to, if you try to take out a set of uh, polyurethane bearings, bushings, you're probably gonna tear them, especially the one piece ones like this. Um, rubber, of course, I mean, that's a one and done. You're not getting those out and putting them back in again. So in the long run, it's actually a really good option for someone who's hopping curbs, someone who's racing and maybe bumping wheels, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, definitely worth, I think that's a real plus. It's not talked about much anywhere, but the fact that you can reuse these are effectively a lifetime buy, I think is a real plus. Uh, one note is that I would recommend that you talk to your sanctioning body if you're gonna be racing these things. Uh, these are not gonna be legal and say spec me out of. Um, read your own rule book, but make sure you can actually run an alternate bushing or yeah, bushing replacement, or not a bushing at all in whatever class you're running. Uh, do we have any questions yet? Um, Mike has a question. Yeah, could you go a little bit more into detail about like necessity of how they're installed, you know, using the jigs and stuff like that? Okay. Maybe, maybe touch on later. Can, why don't you guys grab me one of the jigs? Thanks. Okay, so one of the questions is the, the installation process, the jigs, that sort of thing. Um, one of the things that we offer along with the, the bushing kit or the, the bearing kit is an installation toolkit that goes along with it. And we're right in the middle of doing the installation, so we have one right here. Yeah, just a couple of them in the drill bar, that's all I really need. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the installation kit comes with a whole bunch of these guides. They're actually beautifully made. Um, with different sizes for all the different bushings and a drill a drill guide that goes with it and if Yeah, this is this is optional. It is possible to install these without using it um, Basically all you're doing is you're drilling and tapping two holes But what this guide does Is you would we don't have any arms with the here we go This they're everywhere This basically, this is the wrong guide for this particular one, but it basically goes in like this. As I said, it's the wrong one for this. And it holds the drill guide in place. Um, make sure you can drill nice and straight. It also is pre-tapped so that when you're tapping the holes, you make sure if you've ever tapped thin sheet steel like this, you know it's a challenge. Um, it allows you to tap nice and straight and get that right the first time. 
So it's a nice to have, it's not a must have. Uh, it will definitely make the job easier, but it's gonna cost you a couple of bucks. And so if you are willing to do a little bit of drilling yourself, then that is, uh, you know, that's certainly something you can, you can skip depending on your comfort level. Um, I've done a full install using the tool. I think the tool is very useful. It just makes life easier. You're calling whether you want to do that or not. So here's, uh, this is an arm that's been prepped. It's got one side done already. And here's the other side ready to go. Um, it's already been drilled and tapped. That's the two holes that are in there. And in this case, we had to clean out the bore a little bit. You just use a, a ball hone for that, which comes with the installation kit, or you just use your own. They're available in any auto parts store so that you can just slip the, again, this is for the wrong piece, slip this in here, run a drill inside just for a moment to give it a little divot to lock things in place and lock it down. So that's effectively what installation is. There's a couple of them, the front uppers like this one and the rear lowers in the back. Um, you want to leave one of them loose until you get on there because there's a very critical dimension here uh, on the subframe or on the rear knuckle that you want to get just right. So you want to make sure those divots are in the correct place when you actually do the install. It's all very straightforward. We have an installation video on our website if you want to check that out. But generally speaking, it's a fairly easy thing to do. Drill, tap, and run a set screw. Uh, one thing I did learn while doing mine is that uh, they will not fit the Paco rear arms without really, really, pro probably have to bore this out a little bit. The bore size is small enough that uh, just using a ball hone won't get it off. I think it might be the thickness of the powder coating. Rubber bushings, a lot less, or a lot more tolerant of that. Um, so that is one downside I have found. But I have a feeling that simply cleaning off that, uh, that powder coat would do the job getting that off there. And a more aggressive ream. A ball joint or better, uh, a more aggressive tool for cleaning that up would probably do the trick. Ah, do do do. One of the questions how soon can I get them on my doorstep? Well, it depends on where you live. Uh, if you live in Grand Junction, I would drop them off on the way home tonight. Uh, we do have them in stock at Fly Miata, so as usual, we have free shipping on these things. Um, we'll ship them by FedEx Home, which is one to four days, depending where you live in the US. So, there you go. Um, you could have them on your car for next weekend. So there's the answer to that one. Uh, Mike, any more questions? Yes. What generations are they available for? The question is what generations are they available for? And the question is right now, the answer is right now they are available for the NA and the NB. Um, if these prove to be popular, NC and ND variations might be, might be possible, but at the moment, uh, just for the first two generations of cars. And like I said, they are on the shelf at Flying Miata right now. More questions, Mike? Yes. Does this solution burden the car's structure, like the subframe or the body of the car? Basically, does it stress things more? The question is, does it add more stress to the car? Yeah, so that's, that's interesting. Um, the answer is no, because the total loads going through the subframe are still going to be the same. There might be a little more vibration going through. Um, yeah, if you, if you hit something going, if you're sliding sideways and you hit a, hit a big pothole or hit a, uh, a curb hard or something like that, something to give a hard hit to the side, more of that force will get transmitted to the subframe. Um, that's more theoretical than anything else. The control arms are actually designed to be sacrificial in that sort of situation. So if you hit hard enough that you would potentially damage your subframe, chances are your, your uh, control arm is going to turn into a pretzel anyway. Um, they are designed to basically be a fuse in your suspension uh, because they're cheap and easy to replace. Um, in terms of long-term loading uh, vibration, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, these are not absorbing so much vibration that it's going to be stopping cracking in the subframe. It's an interesting question, though. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to try to quantify that, but I would not be concerned about it. I, I don't think there's a way that it would add enough vibration, enough stress to the subframe or the mounting points to be a problem. More questions, Mike? How many beards would you say that this is uh, for difficulty of install? How many beards? It's another YouTuber. I, I'm, too, I'm too old for that question. <laughs> how many beards the install like i said it's a little bit harder than polyurethane bushings and it's easier i think than rubber bushings one out of five, one out of five bushings in general are not that difficult but they are tedious because there's 22 of them you got to press them all out you got to put the new ones in um so i would give it say a three on difficulty but probably a four to five on tediousness uh simply because you just got to do it you think you've done it you've done half of them you realize you've only done six, you've still got 15 to go. It's just, oh, man. 
well, hopefully you've got 16 to go at that point. But um, yeah, it just, just takes a while. And then you have to realign the entire car from scratch afterwards. So that's just bushings for you. More questions, Mike? That's, You're doing well so far. That's looking pretty good. Okay. So I think I've covered all on here. Um, one thing that's interesting is, dude, I think I mentioned this when you were looking at the, uh, at the wheel wells, is that you may have to, if you're, very, if you're very finely tuned on your chassis setup, you may have to change your spring rates um, with these and with polyurethane or Delrin or any of these other ones that act like a bearing um, because they don't have a spring rate on their own. You may find that effectively your car has lost some spring rate. You might have to add a little bit more. Um, there was a question that came to us about changing your damper settings. Your damper doesn't care if the spring rate is coming from the bushings or whether it's coming from the spring. So either way, you're gonna to have to make sure your dampers still match whatever your spring rate is. I don't think it's gonna be an enormous change, but as you saw in that one that I was playing with over here, there's actually a significant amount of spring in there. And remember that's only two of 20, 22 bushings there. So it can make quite a difference. So one of the questions we get about these is what kind of noise do they make? And they don't make any noise. If you have a spherical bearing that's rattling, that is a spherical bearing that's worn out. Cheap end links, for example, um, using substandard uh, heim joints, they will wear quickly, they will start rattling. That's sort of the sort of thing people are probably associating with spherical bearings, but these are extremely tight. Um, they are not gonna rattle on you because that means that there's looseness in the system. So like our rear upper, upper shock mounts, um, if you have the bearing specified properly, they're silent. So there should be no extra rattling, no extra noise in the car coming from these. So if you have any more questions about that, please do throw them in the, in the comments. Uh, we will be sure to answer them in the comments. Um, we'd love to answer any more questions on this. We may follow up later with a drive report on this car once it's been put together. We've, we've got it out there. It's also being installed on my V8 powered sticky tire aero equipped track me at us. So that's where these things are really gonna shine. I'm looking forward to the extra precision on these, especially since I usually drive it on a cart track where obviously you need a fair bit of precision um, to get around there without excitement. So. Um, please do throw them in the comments. If you like this sort of stuff, again, like I said, please like um, our uh, like our channel, like the video, sign up for notifications, make sure that you find out about these videos, and uh, we'll try to bring you more and more good product and good content. So, thanks for your attention. My name is Keith Anner from Fly Miata. We'll talk to you again later.